All right, this video is for setting up a VPN between two PF Sense boxes in a peer to peer setting. This is going to be using OpenVPN. I have PF Sense latest version as of November 2017, which is a 2.4 loaded on these. The lab network, as I call it, is my 192.168.3.0 network. And that's what each of these boxes is connected to, is that network. So that's our pseudo internet, I guess you could say, because that's the side where these can talk. Then they have the LAN side, which has a Debian box here, Debian, or sorry, I say that wrong, uh, Debian box here, 40.50 is the IP address, and .20.50 is the IP address, sending octets for this one over here. So currently these can't see each other. And the goal when we're done is that they cannot just see each other but they can communicate back and forth fully across the network. Some of the other VPN configurations, for example, like the Road Warrior VPN, which I'm going to do a separate video for with PFSense, where you're going to connect like your laptop while you're out and about and get back into your network. Those networks can be done with two PFSense boxes, but they're harder to get the routing to be bi-directional. The routing only works in one direction, which is normally what you want. You don't want everything on the network when you're connecting your laptop coming into yours, everything going back across bi-directionally, you just want to be able to get into your own network. So that'll be a separate video. This one is specifically for peer-to-peer -peer server and client and how to set two PFSense routers at, for example, a company that has a branch office. You want all the computers across both the network to be able to talk to each other, and that's what we're going to be able to do here in this video. Let me close this and kind of get you started on this. So here's our client side Debian and I know it's a little small to read but this is the one that has the 192.168.20.50 here's the other one 192.168.40.50 so if I go ping 20.50 we have nothing 100% packet loss and we do the same here hundred percent packet loss. So neither one of these can see each other. These are the virtual machines that they're connected to. I've done another video on networking with Zen Center and how you can create private LANs. So essentially there's just a private network connect, connecting those two together, but bridging it off so it can't see the other machines until we do the VPN. So all the traffic once we're done will be routed across there. And here's the box that's going to be our server. And I have it in the top here. It's kind of small to read, but it says the VPN server version right here, VPN client. Just names I gave them, not real relevant. You just have to pick one to be the server and one to be the client. So the server will set up first, which is actually really easy to do. It's only a few steps. Go here, open VPN server, add, and choose peer-to-peer -peer shared key. There's other options where you can add SSL TLS and create more certificates. That's more advanced. We're just going to get the basics set up here. If you have something that advanced, maybe you're more advanced in IT, and you probably also know how to create the other certificates. You have to share certificates between them. Doing it this way, we just have to create a shared key between them that we do, and it makes it a lot simpler. So this can all say at default description is what do you want to call it? And most call it our test VPN. This is just the name of the VPN. Because you can specify port, leave it at default unless you have a custom use case. But this is also how you add multiple VPN servers to one PF sense box with only one WAN address. Now, when you're choosing the interface, you can choose WAN, LAN, or wherever you want. Or if you have multiple WAN addresses, you can choose which one to bind it to or ports. So you can set up different VPNs on different ports pretty easily. Uh, you can have many machines connecting to this one when you specify the network or when you get down to the network settings. So plenty of different options here to go on. And if you need multiple VPN servers for multiple purposes, by default, OpenVPN runs on 1194. You can change that to whichever port you want to do. So here's the next part is the encryption algorithm. AES 128 CBC is the default. If you say, well, I need something a little more secure, bump it up to AES 256 CBC. The important thing to remember, when you change the encryption algorithm here, the clients have to be using the same encryption algorithm or it won't work. If your machine supports hardware crypto, you can enable it here. IPv4 tunnel network. 
you do have to have with OpenVPN a tunnel network. What a tunnel network is, is a network where the two VPN servers have to agree on that tunnels the traffic. It's not the same as the actual network. Tunnel networks are a little bit different. So you can pick something that as long as it's not in one of the routable ranges, you can use this tunnel network. And I'm going to choose 192.168. It has to be a non-routable IP as well, or you'll run to other issues. 70.0 slash. But what this is, this is the tunnel ID IP address that will be assigned to each client. So doing a slash 24. It's essentially kind of like a DHCP server in OpenVPN for assigning IPs to understand each client that's connecting. So you have their public IP coming in, it's assigned a tunnel network, and all the traffic routes through the tunnel network and back to your standard remote network. Now here is the remote network. We're going to skip IPv6 and jump right to this. This is where we're going to put 192.168.20.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
So let me get that real quick. That's the 192.168.3.98. We need to change the type, peer-to-peer -peer shared key. Local port, all that, leave that all the same unless you've done something custom. Then we put in this, whoops, 3.98. All this can be blank. No, do not automatically generate the shared key. Then we just paste this in. So peer-to-peer, -peer, default, 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 IP address, got to go somewhere. And now the IP address can be a fully qualified domain name or IP address. In this case, it's just an IP address. Proxy port, proxy authentication, description. This is our test VPN, just so it has a name. Now, the encryption algorithm, because we changed it on this side to AES 256 CBC, we just have to match it. I mean, you could just left it at default 128, but like I said, the client and server have to match or you'll have problems. IPv4 tunnel network. We have to know the tunnel network of the server that was set up here. So we set the tunnel network to be this 192.168.70.24. So there's our green account tunnel network, but then we also need our remote network. And a remote network on the other side was 40 slash 0 slash 24. And this is the remote network from this one. So you got to remember, we're going from this side here is 20 slash 24. And because they're going from this way here to get a gateway back and forth, so they got to crisscross each other, this is how you get back over there. So everything else here can stay the same. Save. And away we go. Let's go here to the home screen of this. And there we go. We've got the VPN working, but this will not allow it to ping back and forth because there's a couple more steps. And some people, this is often where they feel as though they had success, but this is where you get stuck with uh, this because there's one more step you need to do. And what you need to do, because now you don't have a gateway yet from this side of the network, the client side of the network, back over. So the devices, and you, maybe you can log into PFSense, and I think the PFSense is able to ping over there because of the way the network is. Yeah, and this is showing up with the VPN. We've got a tunnel network assigned to us, but we don't have a gateway. And it's real easy to do. This is, the, this is a real easy step. You go here, interface, assignments, right here, available network ports, and it adds it as another network port save then now it's added then we're going to go over here to interfaces it called it opt one we're going to call it open vpn and we're going to enable the interface hit save apply now what this does this adds a gateway so devices on this side, the client side of the network, have a gateway to get out. So now when we go over here to routing, it's in here as a gateway interface. But it still isn't working. And one minor detail, once you've done this, you notice right here, we've got no IP address assigned to this. We just have to restart the OpenVPN service. You could also reboot the whole router, but you know that sometimes is disruptive to people. So we restart the service. All right, now it has a gateway. Now that it has a gateway attached to it, the two devices should ping to each other as soon as we also add a firewall rule. So now we got to go over here to our rules, open VPN. Now there's two of them here, and one was the opt one that we renamed open VPN. And then this is the open VPN one. I probably shouldn't have called them the same thing, but I typed all caps with the other one right here. This is the one we have to actually add the rule to. And once again, we have to add a rule to get traffic to pass. So I'm just going to say any for now. So we have a wide open rule here. This means all the data can go back and forth through the VPN. Like I said, this is where you can create all kinds of fun firewall rules if you had a lot of details. But a lot of times the goal with, for example, with the client one we just did, there's not any rules needed. We need the networks to completely talk to each other because uh, they have a bunch of services that are moving back and forth. So now let's go over to our Debian boxes. And if I did this right, they should work. And we're pinging on this side. It's responding. And pinging on this side. And that's really it for the VPN setup. It's really not that hard to do. It's pretty straightforward. You just have to remember those couple steps. And adding the gateway one is kind of weird. Uh, 
you know, it's not as automated. And let's do something real quick here. Let's take and rename it just to show you. Whoops. Call it back to opt one, apply. So here's where the rules are, and you can see that there's some packets going back and forth because I have them pinging, but we have no rules here. I do find it a little bit odd, at least conceptually, that you, you think you'd want to put rules against this gateway, but you actually put them apart on the open VPN that's auto-created once you created the client side. Now, one other thing on the client side, let's say you have a more in-depth network. And for example, we do at our office, and we've got multiple LANs. Same thing that you do on the server side, you do on this. So if we're connecting to a server that has a whole bunch of remote networks, we just put inside a notation, a common, a space, each of the networks on there, and that's how we get a gateway to that network. So as you, if you have a really complicated uh, network with just many LANs, you need it. You need a VPN, this site to connect to all the different LANs on that side. You just put a common space so you know all of these because this is what's putting the routing information in there. Now, another side note too, you can also add static routing if you have some need for that as well. You can push static routes across the open VPN ports as well, if that's something needed. So you can say, take this, this is a destination gateway. So if this rule pushes over here and that works, that's also the other reason you added the open VPN interface as an interface gateway. So you can add static routes later. So you have some real custom routing, that's where that's going to go. So hopefully this guide was helpful. It's pretty straightforward for setting up the VPN. Uh, if you're wondering what I did here to add this, this is just uh, adding the open VPN option out of here so you can view that the VPNs up or down pretty straightforward that's all that was uh, as far as customization but that's it that's uh, VPN done pretty straightforward not too difficult once you have those couple little steps in there and make sure you add those couple firewall rules all right hopefully this was helpful I'll do a separate video on how to do like the road warrior VPN on these where you're gonna take your Windows box and do that that is a separate video so all right if you like to kind of here like subscribe if you have questions about this or if I wasn't clear on something and I need to redo this video let me know thanks